Hello. So in this tutorial, I want to show you how to use Marmosa Toolback. Uh, more specifically, uh, Toolback uh, 3.04, which is the latest version that's out there right now. Uh, it, it has become much better than it used to be. It's no longer just a mere rendering engine like Sketchfab just to show your stuff. It, it has uh, really, really improved. So I want to showcase that. And um, if you're if you're already adv an advanced user, uh, probably this particular video might not be for you because I'm going to talk a lot about uh, the very basics of Marmosa Toolback. And as the videos go by, I'll I'll get more deep into um, into more of the options that it has for us to uh, render our assets. So let's get started. So what is Marmosa Toolback? Marmosa Toolback is a rendering engine that has other things like bakers and allows you to get out your normal maps I mean occlusion and all that stuff as opposed to just being a, a bare bones rendering engine so the reason why I like Marmosa Toolback think of it like Unreal Engine 4 so let's say you had Unreal Engine 4 already set up for a 3D artist and it allows you to work without having to do all the blueprint stuff which that's a whole other thing, which if you're good at it, that's fine, that's good. But if you're trying to do something quick and you're trying to focus just on an artistic side, then Marmosa Toolbug is a little bit better than just using UE4. Uh, I would say probably UE4 is better for uh, rendering environments. But when it comes to characters, when it comes to single assets, then this is where Marmosa Toolbag shines. Of course, Marmosa Toolbag can do environments as well, and it could do it pretty well. Uh, but it doesn't have many options that Unreal Engine 4 has. I might touch on UE4 in the future. But for now, let's stick to Marmoset. So, uh, in here you have your usual menu, just like you would in any other program, File. You can just open Scene, Save Scene, uh, Revert, Undo, Import Model, and Export. This is the good thing about um, Marmoset Toolback is that you can export as a Unity package so let's say you wanted to render something in Unity or like how I had to do in some cases where I want to render an asset with um, with some particle effects which as of right now Marmoset doesn't have uh, I will export this package to into Unity which will export everything with the lights and uh, that way you just add the particle effects wherever you want and it, it's very convenient in that way um, the viewer allows you to export directly into your art station. So if you're a 3D artist or a 2D artist or whatever art kind of artist, you're probably familiar with art station. It's the place where everybody is. Uh, uh, you every time you apply for a job, some jobs even ask you directly for your art station. So um, this is also very convenient that it allows you to instantly upload um, your things to ArtStation without you having to figure out how to upload the viewer yourself, which it's, it's not that bad, but uh, you know, it's very convenient. So edit, um, it has, you know, your regular things. The good thing about edit is you have your plugins and we're going to talk about plugins in the future. Sometimes they're really useful. I personally don't use any plugins because I haven't had the need to, but uh, there's a lot of people making plugins for these programs, which are very, very useful. Uh, you got your preferences, which let's go into preferences. You know, uh, your usual things, where to find your skies, which are your HDRIs, um, where you're going to output your your renders and all that kind of stuff. Check for updates and, you know, your regular options um, that you like for any, any other 3D software. So we got view, things that you want to view in your scene. Scene, very self-explanatory, a uh, little bit of a sky browser where you can find your sky, add objects, you know, uh, this is just a menu part on how to do all these things that are right here. So you got all these things right here, these are all the objects that you can add. Uh, material, this is where you can import, export, and add things to your materials, capture. Uh, this is an option that I usually touch a lot. In capture, you can just go to settings. And just set, change the settings to whatever it is that you need for your renderings. 
So I, I'm going to probably be going through this a lot in the future as well. Again, this video is more of a general, um, very basic thing on Marmoset Toolback, so just bear with me. You have your help section, but you know, it, it's help. There's not much to say about it. Okay, so that was the boring stuff. Let's go to the fun part. Uh, now you have all these icons where you can easily uh, start working, where it's like import your model here. You click here and then you browse your um, you browse your hard drive uh, and search for your model. You have the lights where you can add lights to your scene. I have nothing on the scene so nothing's going to show. Uh, you have cameras if you want to add new cameras. A shadow catcher which um, when I bring an asset I'm, I'm going to explain what a shadow catcher is. Uh, you have your fog which is something that you might want to use for like um, what's it called volumetric light which is very useful for uh, if you're rendering like environment stuff or you have a specific kind of asset that will benefit from um, volumetric light you have your baker this is very cool um, actually started using this baker I, I was using substance painters baker and I find that I like marmoset toolback better so I'm gonna talk about this in another video and you got your turntable turntable is just an object that you add to your scene that will allow you to rotate um, your asset pretty quickly. So in here you have you know your scene um, where you have the scale like what kind of scale do you want and the render these are all the options for rendering and you're gonna want to tweak this for whenever you are are finished. I, I usually leave these options for last because whenever you start cranking things up um, even if you have a very good graphics card, things start getting um, a little bit slow. So uh, I usually uh, I usually start tweaking these uh, when I'm almost done with uh, setting up my scene. You have your main camera, uh, which you know you can add more cameras if you want to, uh, with bunch of effects. So uh, the usual effects that I use is uh, the first thing that I turn on is save frames, because uh, if if you done 3D and something like 3D Studio Max, um, you have to turn on your save frames just to make sure uh, that the camera is pointing at whatever you are trying to render because without this, it, this just gives you a general view of the viewport and this will show you exactly what your camera is going to render. And the thing about save frames is it links to the settings that you have here. So let's say I want an image, my usual image for rendering, you know, characters and all that kind of stuff is uh, 1300 by 1500. And as you can see, whoops, the save frames change with the settings that you have over here for your image. So whenever you change this, your save frame is going to change to tell you specifically where your camera is pointing at and how it's going to look in the end. Uh, okay, let's leave it at that. Focus. Um, we have a bunch of options here for focus and you know what? Um, I think it's better to show you guys with an asset on the scene. So um, I'm going to bring um, one of my assets on the scene. I'll probably open uh, one of my used scenes and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. I just opened a scene with one of my characters. Um, this is a very bare bone scene. Uh, just just a character with um, a shadow catcher and one light, so it's not something very um, uh, very complex. So I, I just want to show you the camera stuff. So as you can see, I already have my save frame set up. So um, we have things like depth of field, which is very useful. Uh, the thing that I like is that you could use your middle mouse to click. Now I'm clicking with my middle mouse just to um make more visible the parts that I want the camera to focus in so um let's say I'm gonna put this like super terrible if I want to focus on the face or if I want to focus like on the knee pad I just click and that'll do I'm gonna bring this down like over here to make more reasonable and this is how you do depth of field in um, Marmoset Tobac you know very very quickly without having to tweak so much stuff in the beginning so this can give you a very quick render if you need to just show a client or whatever you're participating 
in a group you need to show the group like hey this is what I have uh, this is a very quick way to just set up an asset with a little bit of depth of field you got um, flare which if you've seen any um, JJ Abrams movies you know what this is uh, it's it's not very useful unless you have a lot of lights in your scene that you want to show off distortion is I've never used this this is um, yeah it does this uh, you may want that effect for some reason I don't know I honestly don't like that effect but um, but it, it's there for people that want to use it uh, same thing with the chromatic aberration um, that's for a very particular effect um, if you want to use that I honestly don't use that either actually I'm gonna bring this to zero and we have the uh, actual things that I use so which are these things right here like tone mapping uh, sharpen your image so instead of doing these things in Photoshop I would do it here so let's say I want to uh, play with you know the curves uh, if you if you use Photoshop you know what I'm talking about if you want to use the curves instead of going to Photoshop and tweaking your image there you can do it here with the curves over here in this part so I can make my tweak my image to do like on an S curve which I sometimes like to do give it a little bit more contrast since this is a stylized asset of course it needs a little bit more light but anyways that's just to show you um, things that you could do with the curve um, you can change the exposure, contrast, saturation. Um, it has like different presets for tone mapping. Um, sometimes, in uh, some cases, I've used this one, which is a filmic. If you want to make something realistic, the filmic one is a is is a very good one. Um, in in my opinion, that that's just me. It makes my asset look a little bit more realistic. I don't use it for stylized things. Uh, like this guy over here but um, it's there uh, sharpen bloom so if you have any anything emissive like I have right here like this little uh, LEDs on his uh, goggles or this little um, LEDs on just rocks that are on his arms you can turn off on the bloom bring it on and as you can see the light is emitting a little bit uh, actually I should lower that down but this this gives you a little bit of you know that glow that comes out of the emissive map that helps you out a lot with this uh, vignette that is if you want to you know frame your character a little bit this is a nice effect I uh, use it sometimes it's very recommended if you want to just render your character for portfolio purposes uh, grain I also have no use for this uh, there might be a situation where you want to use grain on your image I honestly don't know in my case what that in what case that would be I haven't used it yet so um, but it's there you know uh, if you play Mass Effect 3 or Mass, I think it's Mass Effect 2 uh, you notice there's like the film grain option I think this is what this is but I honestly don't use this option for anything uh, okay so one of the things I'm going to take off the depth of field because that's making me a little bit dizzy. Wow. And I just zoom into his crotch, which I wasn't intent to. Okay. So um, I'm going to take off the depth of field. And now let's talk about the other things that we have here. We already talked about the camera. Let's talk about the shadow catcher. So um, I'm going to erase this. As you can see, once you bring your character into um, Marmoset, Unless you have an asset that has a floor or like a turntable built in or something underneath it, your asset's going to look like it's floating in space. So the good thing about Marmoset is it, it gives you this shadow catcher thing, which once you activate it, you can see that I have shadows now. So this is a good way to ground the character. That way you can see that the character is on top of something, even though he's actually floating in the air the shadow catcher will help you out with that it does have some options which is like opacity you can change the opacity of the shadows it has some options here that I've never touched honestly I only play with the opacity and the good thing about the shadow catcher is that you can move it depending on 
what kind of asset you have you can make it bigger if you need to and just rescale it on the transform so actually this is as far as it goes but um, um oh this is another thing um marmoset toolback has like default values that you can use like minimum and maximum but you can type whatever you want here so if you just saw like if I do this the maximum value that marmoset has is 10 but I can type whatever I want say like I want to type 200 it goes all the way to 200 so that that's another good thing about marmoset toolback is it, it has uh, almost quote unquote limitless capabilities where you can just type a number that you want and it will try to reach that number um, and it does that for for lots of options not only scale so that's a shadow catcher let's try the turntable I'm not gonna talk about the baker or the fog I'm gonna touch on those in the next video because otherwise it's gonna be very very long um, let's add a turntable so what I'm going to do is select the object where my body is so if you're familiar with Maya Max doesn't do this but if you're familiar with Maya um, Maya has a way of grouping um, objects in nodes so Marmoset does the same thing so if you just select the node of your model uh, which hopefully has uh, a zero 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 position that will help a lot so make sure your model comes from a zero 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 position from your 3d package and then bring in a turntable. So the turntable, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to create an actual turntable. So as you can see, now I can use a timeline to rotate my character 360 degrees. So you can even play that and you can loop it if you want to. So if you want to generate a turntable, this is a good way to do it. I usually use this for things like taking pictures so if I want to take pictures of various size of the characters so what I would do is just add a turntable you know turn it so that way I don't have to be uh, moving my lights or anything so this is a very uh, easy way to do things uh, however for this to work you have to have everything underneath your turntable so if I were to have like the head and arms outside of my turntable and I would do this as you can see those things would not turn so make sure that everything that you want to rotate under your turntable is under this node right here because otherwise it's not going to rotate okay so everything that you want to rotate should be under the turntable node all right i think that's it for uh this uh side of the screen let's go to this side of the screen real quick uh i'm going to leave the material description for another video but for now, just know that you can create your materials by clicking create a new material. You have uh, duplicate select material and you have um, a bunch of presets that are already set up for you uh, from the Marmoset team. So you have all this uh, Quixel stuff. I don't use Quixel, so I wouldn't know how to use this. Uh, but you have an Unreal template, which is very good if you're trying to match your things to how they would look in Unreal and you want to export your textures outside of something like Substance Painter with the Unreal template, you select Unreal template and it will give you a template exactly for Unreal Engine uh, without any tweaking because otherwise if you use the default one then you'll have to tweak the channels and whatnot. So um, yeah this will allow you to select uh, from the material preset, this is for you to assign the, the material to the object and then you have the material itself. Each uh, e each time you create uh, like a new material, it comes with many many options, and we're going to talk about all these options in future videos. But for now, know that you have your basic stuff, like normals, which is you know surface. Uh, there's also a secondary, which is detail normals. You have your gloss, which can be defined as roughness if you're using the PBR workflow. You have your al albedo which can also be called a diffuse channel. I usually don't play with the dif diffusion here. Uh, mostly I use it when I'm doing like realistic skin, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, you have your metalness, which it's usually by default is in specular. I always change it to metalness because that's what I use. 
I always uh, try to follow the PBR workflow because um, whenever I build things for uh, indie developers, they always want the PBR workflow. So I'm just used to that. Uh, you have your ambient occlusion map, which you can add an ambient occlusion map. If you don't have an ambient occlusion map, there are post-processing effects right here where you can enable ambient occlusion. However, the ambient occlusion provided as a post-processing effect is not as deep as an ambient occlusion map so if you want your character to pop and to have nice ambient occlusion like I have right here so take a look this is how it looks without the ambient occlusion so there are a couple of things that don't look good if I turn it off so uh, I would suggest you have an ambient occlusion map for your character uh, it's, it's a good way you have an emissive map you can do other kinds of emissive like heat, fluorescent I usually uh, take out my emissive maps from uh, Photoshop. I make them in Photoshop and you have a slider here to define how intense you want your emissive map to be. So you can crank it up or not. And as you can see, if you look at the lenses here, how it's changing. Uh, the glow is if you're doing something like a lamp and you're doing the bulb part. So you can use the glow then. I, I can't use the glow here because the glow bypasses all the map so it's going to turn everything into green. As you can see this is what happens when I turn on the glow. So if you have something like a lamp the glow is very useful otherwise it just leave it in black. And you have the transparency. This is if you have... Um, I'm actually let me switch to my other asset so if you have something like this and uh, for instance I'm using the transparency the ditter for the eyebrows so that the eyebrows not, not the eyebrows the eyelashes so as you can see this is a complete mesh the eyebrows actually if I would um, click none you can see it it turns into it shows you the mesh but since I have ditter which is the one you usually want for hair I can use the albedo that I have here in order to generate this eyelashes the way they're supposed to be without actually showing the whole mesh and here I can talk about the other thing that I want to mention which is the diffusion uh, this is the option that I use the most with diffusion is a subsurface scattering uh, this is mostly to get a little bit of a more reali realistic skin. So we have all these options that I'm going to talk about later. But this is what Diffusion is for. It has uh, some other like microfiber Dota Diffuse, which I don't I haven't played Dota yet or I don't make anything for Dota. But uh, from this option, so I mostly use a subsurface scattering and the unlit. The unlit is just to check for things. So... Um, yeah, might not be doing anything right now, but um, I like to leave it here at subsurface. Actually, let's check this one out. See, on LED, we'll do that. We'll just show you the color. So if you're doing like a portfolio piece and you just want to show like the albedo map, uh, I'll use the on LED function of diffusion. Other, otherwise, I usually leave it at Lambertian or subsurface scattering if, if I'm just doing um, something like this skin. And you also have access to access to other things like detail normal maps, which uh, will just push. Uh, I'm just using you know, like a tileable um, normal map here to push the detail of her skin a little bit further to make it look uh, just a tad more realistic. So um, yeah, that is the material stuff, and we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth into how to set a scene on the next video. Thanks for watching and if you're interested in more of these videos, please like and ask any questions you want in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them. And um, whoops, I'll see you on the next video.